I'm hoping that you're a person that likes to do electronic projects, perhaps like something in robotics or some control application. What I want to tell you about is a special project that we're going to show you that shows how to do something a little different. In the past, most people that did an electronic project, a control application, used some form of microcontroller. The problem is most, micro most microcontrollers have severe limitations. For example, they may not be able to use arrays at all. They may only be able to use integer math. There may not be functions like sine or cosine. A lot of problems like that if you're doing a very sophisticated project. In this case, we want to show you how to use a standard PC running Robot Basic to do your project. Robot Basic has all the things you need. It has arrays and floating point variables and unlimited variables, all the math functions, everything that's necessary, including commands that can output to the ports, and input from the ports, whether it's a Bluetooth port or a parallel port, whatever you need. Now in this particular case, the project we're going to do is fairly sophisticated. We're going to look at a satellite up in space that's rotating in a zero gravity. Now we're going to simulate that with some uh, very good ball bearings and so on so we can try to simulate the, the low gravity for the project. But what it does is it allows us to look at a PID control system. Now if you're not familiar with that, we're going to have an entire report on our on our web page that you can download and read all about it. The basic principle though is that we're going to try to move this satellite to some place that we want it to be. And in order to do that, we have to be able to control it. We have to be able to decide how fast it's going. There's a lot of math involved, but very exciting math and something that I think you'll enjoy seeing. If you ever try to control this particular satellite by hand, you'll see that it's almost impossible to do it manually. But yet the software will be able to control it directly. Now, you don't have to go out and build this yourself. We're actually going to have a model here that we're going to show you. But one of the great things about Robot Basic is that in addition to being able to control all this real life stuff, it has a lot of commands in it that allow you to do video games and simulations. And we're going to actually simulate this, this space station, this satellite in space. And you'll be able to download that program for free from our website, including your free copy of Robot Basic. And run the program and actually try to do it by yourself. And then turn control over to the automatic portion. And the program, you'll be amazed at how fast and accurately it can control the satellite. We're also going to show you a model that we've built that actually uses airflow, some fans, to blow the satellite. It kind of gives us a, a real weightless type simulation. A little bit of movement, the satellite starts to move and we have to stop it. Very difficult, just like if it was something out in, 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 you know, in weightless space. So let's get right to it, take a look at the model and some of the simulations, and we'll show you all about this, and we'll come back and talk about how you can get your free copy of Robot Basic. Alright, this is the model of our space station itself. You notice that we have a lot of spokes here, and then we have it running on this little bearing in the center. Now one of the important things about doing this simulation is that we could not use a motor to drive this directly. If we did, the gear train itself would provide far too much friction. You'll notice there's almost zero friction here. If I start it, it moves for quite a long time because there is no bearings or motor driving this. In order to get the drive, we have these veins around the outside. And there's a fan mounted on this side and another on the other side. These fans, one blows one way, the other blows in this direction. So by turning on the fans, we can control the movement of the station. Now you'll notice here that we have an LED mounted with a transmitter receiver that goes through the station. Each little spokes break the beam as it moves. With two of these, one on the left side and one on the right side, we're able to determine exactly where the station is and count the spokes as they move by. This is called quadrature control. We actually did an article for Servo Magazine on quadrature control. This is our quadrature controller over here. It's made with a microcomputer from Parallax and the article is in Servo if you want to go back and look it up sometime. Now what this happens now is that the quadrature controller will send information back to the PC. 
the PC will send information out to control the motors, and then we'll be able to use all the mathematics of a PID control system to control this station and make it move exactly where we want it to go. Now what we're going to do first is have a simulation. And the simulation will be controlled by one program, and then we're going to simply use that exact same algorithm, the same hardware, the same software will control this hardware. And we'll see all that in a moment. Let's move over and look at our simulation. All right. This depicts our simulated space station. We only have three spokes on it to make it easier to follow because actually, as you'll see, that makes it much easier to follow. This red line at the top shows where the station currently is, and there's a red line at the bottom showing our current destination, 180 degrees out. We're simply going to come up and click the auto control. When we do, the station will move just as we expect around to the 180 degree point. You'll notice there's a graph at the bottom showing the actual location of the station referenced to time. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move using these arrows, move the station a little bit, the destination of the station a little bit at a time. So I'm going to move this. You'll notice it tracking it, trying to find it. Then I'm going to move it backwards by pressing the other arrow. It's going to try to catch up. And you'll notice on the graph how closely it's matching. There's a little bit of error, but that's the whole idea. We're using that error to control the motors. What we're going to do now is look at how this can be used to control the real space station. I'm going to click right, this This box. time, we're going to run the exact same mathematical algorithm, but we're going to click this box, changing it from yes to simulation to no for simulation. Now, since we're still set up just like before to go from the current heading, zero degrees, down to 180, not only will the simulator move, but so will the real space station. The mathematics in Robot Basic that in this program will con continue to keep both of these items, the simulation and the real program, synchronized. So I'm going to hit Auto Control and let it begin to control it. You'll notice that this station now is going to begin to move, and the real one has started moving too. When it gets to the correct place, it will stop. We'll watch it stop. And then when we go back, we'll see that the other, the simulator itself has also stopped. Now as before, I'm going to incrementally control it. And if you watch what we do here and then watch the real station, you'll see that the real station is moving and then I'll move it backwards. And you see that as I move it different directions, the real station is moving and stopping. Let's try a step control here. We'll move it to the desired position of 90 degrees. You see it moving there, the real station's moving. And the graph on the simulator shows the actual path taken by the real station. 